My name is Mac, M-A-C-K period. I'm a mass art student studying Studio for Interrelated Media and minoring in sustainability. During the summer of 2020, I worked at a summer camp where we had to socially distance and mask outside while teaching young kids different crafts. After this experience, I became interested in creating virtual Skillshare workshops to expand my experience with demographics and health protocols. Studio for Interrelated Media, or SIM for short, is where students can work in a combination of experimental media. The program teaches sound, light, performance, and event production, and is the first of its kind in the country for an undergrad degree. I worked on Creator Potluck for a SIM elective class called Event Planning and Production. During these three semesters, from spring 2021 to spring 2022, I hosted four different events featuring eight different student and outside artists. The idea started as a one-hour video call with artists presenting techniques and information around their craft, and attendees were able to share their own artwork for critique. Lori Marie Jenkins is a mixed-media artist making collage work in a variety of artist books. She shares her work on YouTube and teaches online classes. To quote her, she once said, I'm living proof that it's never too late to start. Days before I turned 50, I created my first art piece. In this event, Laura Marie shared a painting demo for making different backgrounds out of the same materials. Laura Marie was the first artist I contacted who was interested in taking part of the first creator potluck. I had followed her since I looked up artist book references before making my first book a year before emailing her. We met on a video call not long after to discuss and workshop the idea. Haley Cooper is a Mass Art 2022 alum who studied communication design and metal smithing. For Creator Putluck, Haley made three different types of fake blood for photography. We met my foundation year in a lithography class and became friends there. I saw Haley post her designs with fake blood effects and thought it would work for my event. Lastly, I shared my own techniques with rubbing powder graphite on sculptures and leather. Hi everyone, today I'm showing you how to get this uh, texture, color, and finish on uh, sculptures as well as a pair of cowboy boots um, or other leather goods. The materials you need are graphite powder. This one is water soluble. A fi final fixative, which this one is matte, but you could also get glossy. A rain and stain repellent um, for clothing and shoes. This one is from Puma, but you can get any brand. For cleanup on work surfaces, I use water and a kneaded eraser um, to get everything off and a tissue. I also have a cup of water here for the um, finish and some of the powder in a container. That's about it. So as you can see, this uh, piece has been sitting on um, a pedestal and so some of the marks have been worn off so I'm gonna uh, refinish this. You can see here this is the powder by itself and then this was the powder mixed with water so it kind of gets dull down here um, but it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, for this this is plaster so the powder goes on pretty well and you just kind of work it in See how it's covering up, any white spots, and you just keep going back. I used my fingers for this. I'm sure you could use a brush, but I feel like I would lose more product that way. It just gets a little messy. to mention on the hand I dip the string um, in the powder and water as well to get it the same color as the rest of the finish and I also coated the needle here with uh, spray adhesive and then I rubbed the powder on that. The finish isn't as shiny 
or metallic, but it's still um, the same color. For the cowboy boots, even though um, the texture gets dulled down by the uh, water, it doesn't, uh, just the powder by itself on the leather, it doesn't stick as well. So you need to add some of the repellent into this. Um, I mix it and dilute it with the water so that it can stick easier. So I poured some of the repellent, I'm going to pour a little bit of water, and then I'm going to mix it in with the powder by itself up here. And I'm just using, you can use anything, probably a stick would be better, but I'm using the end of a marker. And then I apply this also with my finger, and then you can see it starts getting um, on the boot. And you can add more powder because this is a little diluted. And so here I'm going to take a big chunk. So see it gets darker and going over there's some uh, thread here and that's going to get stuck in when you put in on top of the, um, when you put the powder on top of this. But that's okay, you can scratch it off after. I'm going to continue this and uh, put on all of the powder first with it being diluted here. Alright, so this is the boot with the wet charcoal applied. So it's a little more dull compared to this one, if you can tell. It's less reflective, um, but I'm going to seal it um, in between the prints. So I'm probably, uh, I would go in the direction of the wind, but I'm probably too close, but it's okay. I feel like with medium, it's like, I, I mean, fix it, is, um, it's like okay to be too close. And then I'm gonna go over with the powder once more all over, um, and then we'll be done. These are the finished boots. I'm really happy with them. They, I finished them by putting the powder and then spraying them one more time uh, with both the fixative and the uh, finishing of the stain and green repellent. Um, I think they look really good. So today we're going to play with three different backgrounds using the same color of paints. Uh, purple, turquoise, white, yellow, uh, Van Dyke brown hue. And using them in different um, techniques and different order, uh, it is easy to create some fun backgrounds with limited supplies. So there we have it. These are on canvas, acrylic paints. Sponges, splatters, credit card brushes, and fun. I'm going to be playing on canvases today. I have a brush and Mod Podge and assorted old book pages. I call these underpants. I start every piece with old book pages down first. Gives me a chance to bond with the piece. Oh, and add energy immediately out of the gate. So with Mod Podge and old book pages, I'm going to cover this canvas. I am going to put Mod Podge around the edge and wrap that. We're going to concentrate on this background, but I'm going to also play with that a little bit. I have gesso on here. Apply a generous coat of gesso. I'll take this piece 
lay it on top, push that canvas down, and we're creating texture. So this is the piece that we're going to play with, but this is yummy as well. So we'll set that aside, and we will let this one dry. All right, the colors I'm going to play with on this, green, gold, purple, and turquoise, white, and yellow. Bring the purple in first. Paint that background and let that layer dry. I'm going to bring in a piece of sandpaper. This is pretty coarse. It's a 60, 60 grit and tear that up. Okay, gorgeous texture. I'm going to bring in the turquoise. And a gift card or a credit card. that dry. Hit that with the sandpaper and in the yellow, my credit card or gift card. Paper towel. Pick up some of that paint. And let that dry. Bring that turquoise back in. Put a little bit on my workspace. Dilute that. Paint some of that turquoise paint onto the bubble wrap. I have some white acrylic and this screen, kind of a wide screen, and a makeup sponge. I'm going to put that screen down there and add some noise to the background with that white. We'll let that dry. Bring in some Van Dyke Brown Hue and my gift card or credit card. Make some markings. Let that dry. I'm going to bring the sandpaper back in and rough this up a little bit. I'm going to bring in some pearl magenta. That's gorgeous. And a circle maker. So the background is all done. I'm just going to grab something off my desk and put it on there. I'm not going to glue it on, but you can see how a focal point would work on that piece. So there's background number one. All right, here's where we blotted the gesso. We're going to use the same colors, uh, just a different technique. I'm going to put some purple on here, dilute that with some water. Paint that onto the piece. Blot that with a paper towel. Get some texture going already. And let that dry. Bring in the turquoise. Using the same colors. Let that dry. I'm going to bring in a finer sandpaper and just bring up some of that uh, gesso texture. Bring in some of that yellow, dilute it down. We want it juicy with pigment, but also juicy with water. 
I have 91% alcohol at the ready. And I will take my alcohol. Drip some drips on there. And we'll let that dry. A bit of the fine sandpaper. Bringing a stencil in and some of that rose color that we used on the last piece because we're using the same colors and just adding some color here and there. Beautiful. Taking my credit card or my gift card, putting some white acrylic paint on it. And we'll let that dry. Okay, so the only color that's not represented on here that we used on here would be the Van Dyke Brown Hue. So I'm going to bring in a stencil with some tiny dots and a makeup sponge and just add a little bit of noise with those dots. There we go, background number two. All right, and look at how different they look. Same colors, same canvas, and yet they look so different. So let's see that with our, just as beautiful. For our third one, I'm gonna bring in that stencil that we just played with, keeping our supplies at a minimum. I'm bringing in some homemade texture paste, spreading that over that stencil. And we will let that dry. Bring in that turquoise, use that for a base coat. Let that dry. I'm gonna bring in my sanding block. This is a coarse sandpaper and I'm going to go over the dots. Take some of the purple paint, just dilute that. Let that dry. I'm going to sand this just in a couple of places. Bring in the yellow, dilute it, and we're going to splatter. And we'll let that dry. Bring the white paint and a credit card in. And we'll let that dry. Bring in my stencil and the pearl magenta or rose color. Beautiful. Let that dry. So the only color that's missing on here, once again, is the Van Dyke Brown Hue. So I'm going to dilute some of that. 
stand my art piece on end and drip some of that down. And we'll let that dry. So here are the three backgrounds that we created using the same colors on every piece and they are so different and so beautiful. So let's just pretend that this is our one of our focal points. So this is how she would look on this. Plenty of noise going on over there, that's great. Um, this is how she would look on here. She needs some low lighting. Still beautiful around the edge. And here she is on this piece. So with a little bit of finagling, she would work on each and every background. All right, your turn. Go create, go play, go have fun. Hey guys, I'm Haley. I'm going to show you how to make um, like a fake blood effect for photography in like with three different methods or ways. Um, the first is just going to be using just like ink. Um, I have this red acrylic ink and then black calligraphy ink, which they don't have to be acrylic or calligraphy. It's just these are both water based so they can mix together. Um, and this is more for like like when it's wet it looks really good but once it dries down it doesn't look as great um, and it's a very flat effect. The second one is using uh, just like a strawberry or like a raspberry jam. I like I use strawberry because it has less seeds um, and that gives it like a more like a thick like gooey look and then the third is with jello and I also I added um, this is boba like dry boba that you would boil to make bubble tea, but I used it to make the jello darker. But if you had probably like a black food coloring, it would work the same as the inks. Um, so these two methods are like a less opaque way. And then this, what I like about the inks is they're very opaque. So it's when you take a picture of it, you can't really see what's behind it. Whereas with these, um, for this one I used to make type so it was much easier to position where I wanted it and it kind of stayed put and the jello is much more runny so I wanted it to be like a blood splatter effect. Okay so first I'll do just the ink. I mean you just kind of, I'm running low because I've been doing this a lot, but just kind of put some red ink and a tiny bit of black which I need, I don't think I have toothpicks. Just a tiny bit of black ink. Just have water here. Because I don't want too much, just a really little bit, because I only have a really little bit of red ink in here. And just mix it, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, just make like a blood red color. And then when I would actually do this, I would make much more, but, um, and then I'll show you what that looks like dripping on some white paper. Next, for the, I'll do the jello because I have some hot water. Um, I would take. If you do the whole packet, and then much, much less water than you would actually need. So I have some boiling water. And I would just do, like I usually just cover the jello, and you can always add more water later. And then you just wanna stir it until the jello is dissolved. And sometimes I find that you have to microwave it and to get it all dissolved. 
Um, cause if it doesn't all dissolve, then it's a little, it looks a little chunky or like crystally. And this I find when I put it on the paper, the white from the paper comes through and it makes it very bright. Um, and I use white paper for these. So it's like a plain background. So it's easier to remove or easier to apply to other things. So when you put this on the white paper, it's, I mean, it's like a cherry red, which I'll let that dry for a minute and I'll show you. Um, so that's why I add the boba because, so when these get cooked, they get like a blackish, like dark brown color. Just take some out. Um, I'm actually going to put some of the jello in here, so I'm not doing all of it. So I use less boba. Um, so if you just take them out and then you can kind of crush them up. Because I found with the Jello, a weird thing is, so I don't have food coloring, so I tried to use the inks, but the inks don't mix with Jello, and I think it's because the heat makes them dry. So they just, it's just like you get like chunks of acrylic ink dried up in there, so it doesn't really work. Okay, and just keep stirring it and the boba will dissolve. And that just makes it darker and thicker, which is cool when you're pouring. Like if you want it to look, like when you're pouring it and if you want it to drip slower, like if you have it at like an incline to make drips, it'll drip slower. So this is what the jello looks like and see how fast that goes. It's a very bright red and it drips very fast. So adding the boba will make it look a little darker, a little more blood-like, I think, anyway, or my interpretation of blood. But also, like I said, like you don't need to go out and buy boba. This is all just things I had. Um, I think if you were to dissolve the jello in less water and let it cool down a little bit, it would be much thicker. And then you could probably use like black food coloring or even like a, probably like a mixture of like blue and just different color food colorings to try to get it to like a more blood red color. Okay, so this, um, I'm going to drip this also. And I'm going to put another drip of the red so you can see it compared. Okay, so that's the boba on the right, and then this one is just the regular jello. So the boba makes it just a little bit darker. And you can just experiment with how much boba you want to put, how little boba. If you like the cherry red, you could just use the cherry red. I just wanted it to be a little bit darker and also like experiment with other things like I tried one method and I, I used soy sauce to darken it that didn't work and it smelled very bad so that didn't really work but definitely try whatever you have it's not really like there's no recipe I just used kind of what I have on hand and what I could get like relatively easily it's also very messy so when I have splattered it and I'll show those videos too um I put down I have like a tablecloth like a plastic tablecloth that I put down below the paper to protect whatever surface because the jello will stain and the ink will obviously stain because that's what it's made to do <laughs> okay so yeah so this gets even darker the more boba you add let me see if I can show that. The one on the right. This is the one I just made. So it's much darker. It's not thicker yet, but if you let them sit a little bit longer, they'll get thicker and then they won't run as fast. And also, if you're photographing it, what I do is I put it on the floor so I wouldn't be, like, picking it up like this. I would have it on the floor with something like this, like, underneath one end of it. Just elevating it a tiny bit just so it drips slowly. Um, 
And then I use these for like an animation, so I recorded it, but if you were photographing it, then you would just, you would probably be a little more careful with how you're manipulating where the drips are going and what they're doing. So the last thing I did was with strawberry jam. Um, I found when I was trying to place the blood in a shape, those methods are all super runny. So they kind of get everywhere and they make a big mess. Um, but with the jam, it stays where you put it for the most part and it's a little easier to manipulate. I'm just gonna take some of it. And what I did is I kind of, um, it's chunky, so there is like bits of strawberry, but that, when I was doing it, that helped me because it, I would place a strawberry and it would be like a point to go off of with the rest of the jam. Um, and also what I did is the jam mixes really well with the inks. So I'll take this ink and mix it in with the jam. The, it just makes the jam a little bit more opaque and a little more like bloody looking. As you mix it, it breaks up the chunks, so it's a little it's a little smoother to use and easier to kind of paint on. But these are water-based inks, so I think if you used like a different, if you use like something that isn't water-based, it probably wouldn't mix well with the jam. But this is just like a blood red kind of gooey consistency and I use this I printed out big letters and then I painted over them with the jam to make it look like the letters were drawn in blood um, so I'll show that to you on the white paper also so this is just like a thicker like more globby kind of, and it stays where you put it So you can really like draw with this and it's not going anywhere, but it keeps like a thick, like it has like a little height to it. It stays pretty thick. So that's three different ways that I found um, to make a blood effect to take pictures of. 